What the fuck is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can find me on Twitter at Noah More Parties. And in today's video, I am pressed over probably the stupidest Dynasty ADP in the history of Dynasty ADPs, and that is the ADP of Marlon Mack. It's bad. Let's get into it. <laughs> Uh, number one, let's just remind ourselves a little bit of like what Marlon Mack is as a player, how good he is. Going back to college, he played at South Florida. He broke out as an 18-year-old true freshman. Uh, he had three straight seasons with 1,000 or more rushing yards. His dominator rating as a true freshman was 37%, which is in the 97th percentile for true freshmen. And he finished his college career with 65 receptions. He was a three down back. He averaged 1.94 yards per carry greater than the other running backs at South Florida, a group that averaged 3.52 stars as high school recruits, which is in the 63rd percentile, and a group that also included Dearness Johnson, one of the best backup running backs in the league, a solid NFL player. That group of teammates, Marlon Mack was nearly two yards per carry better than them in college, 65 receptions, three straight seasons with really nice production after one of the best freshman seasons we've ever seen. And then he went to the combine, had near workhorse size at 5'11", 213 pounds, ran a 4'5 flat in the 40, posted a 74th percentile burst score, and then was drafted in the fourth round to the Indianapolis Colts. His first season, he backed up Frank Gore, had like 580 yards and four touchdowns, 17% dominator rating, which is in the 63rd percentile for 21-year-old running backs in the NFL, among players drafted since 2007. And then he became the starter the next season, had over 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns, in only 12 games, had a 24% dominator rating, which is in the 81st percentile for 22-year-olds, and was the RB19 in only 12 games. In 2019, the year after that, he had almost 1,200 yards, 8 touchdowns, a 25% dominator rating, which is also in the 81st percentile for 23-year-olds, and was the RB17 while only playing 14 games. If you take his per game numbers in those two seasons as a starter in 2018 and 2019 and extrapolate them. His 17 game pace from 2018 and 2019 is 1,428 yards, 12 touchdowns, and 20 receptions. That 17 game pace would have made him the RB7 in 2021 behind Ezekiel Elliott and just ahead of Alvin Kamara. So on a per game basis as the starting running back in Indianapolis in 2018 and 2019, that's how good Marlon Mack was after being one of the best small school running backs we've ever seen in college football. He was also an efficient runner during his time in Indianapolis. In 2017, his box adjusted efficiency rating, which is a metric that I created, which kind of filters through all the noise in yards per carry. You know, like yards per carry is kind of tough to compare because like situations are different. You're running into, you know, against different defenses behind different offensive lines, against different box counts, things like that. Comparisons using yards per carry are just hard because yards per carry is bad. And so box adjusted efficiency rating looks at how efficient you are relative to the other guys on your team. So you're playing the same defense as you're operating behind the same offensive line and the same offensive system. So how efficient are you relative to those guys? And then adjust things for the box counts that you're seeing and produces a number that shows how much the average carry for player X is worth relative to the average carry for all the other running backs on his team. And so if you're more efficient than the other guys on your team, you're probably good. If you're less efficient than the other guys on your team, you're probably not that good. You know, caveats apply with, you know, how talented are your teammates, things like that. But in the NFL, everybody's good. Anyway, Marlon Mack's box adjusted efficiency rating in a part-time role in 2017 was 106%, which is in the 57th percentile. So he was an above average runner as a rookie. And then in 2018 and 2019, he posted box adjusted efficiency ratings of 115% and 129%, which are in the 70th and 84th percentiles. And in 2019, that 129% box adjusted efficiency rating was fifth in the NFL among all guys who led their teams in carry. So among all lead backs behind only Joe Mixon, Derrick Henry, Leonard Fournette, and Josh Jacobs. Right behind those guys, Marlon Mack. Then in 2020, you know, obviously the, the Colts had drafted Jonathan Taylor that offseason. Marlon Mack tore his Achilles in week one, missed the rest of the season, came back last year in 2021, was not very efficient, but only on 28 carries, an incredibly small sample. He had some healthy scratches last season. Jonathan Taylor obviously just kind of took the job and ran with it. There wasn't much shot for Marlon Mack after that. But the point is here that the last time we saw a healthy Marlon Mack 
on a sample larger than, you know, less than 30 carries. He was one of the most effective pure runners in the league. He's not just some random dude. He's been productive in college, efficient in college, a three down back in college, athletic at the combine, decent size, productive in the NFL over multiple seasons, efficient in the NFL over multiple seasons. Then he got hurt and got replaced by one of the best running back prospects we've ever seen. Marlon Mack did nothing wrong. He's been, he's done nothing but be a good player, which brings us to the present day. Marlon Mack, about a week ago, a couple weeks ago, signed a one-year deal with the Houston Texans, who a group of running backs, the other guys currently under contract for the Texans, are Rex Burkhead, Daria Gunbawale, Royce Freeman, Scotty Phillips, and Darius Anderson. That's a bunch of random dudes. And yes, the Texans are a bad team. They're going to be bad in 2022. They were bad in 2021. But that depth chart I just ran through is easily the worst running back depth chart in the league. Like, it's not even close. And in fantasy football, volume is king. You know, we, we've seen in recent years, like Najee Harris, we knew that offensive line was going to be bad. We knew that, you know, raw efficiency numbers were not going to be good. He was a top five running back anyway. Uh, we know that the Lions are bad. We like DeAndre Swift anyway. Uh, the Jaguars have been really bad the past couple years. James Robinson has been productive anyway. We've seen time and time again, running backs can be productive with good volume despite being on bad teams. Volume is king, and if Mack is healthy, he's easily the best running back on that team. Rex Burkhead's a decent little player. Daria Gunbawale is, you know, whatever. Royce Freeman is not what we thought he was. Scotty Phillips is just a dude. Darius Anderson is just a dude. These guys are just dudes. And Marlon Mack has been productive and efficient to a very high level before. And the key part of this is that he is easily, by far, the cheapest starting running back in Dynasty right now. He's currently being drafted, according to DLF, as the RB56 in Dynasty startups in April, with an ADP in the 15th round as the 178th player off the board. That's far beyond what the last other starter among NFL running backs is going in Dynasty startups. The last starter being taken in Dynasty startups, other than Marlon Mack, is Cordero Patterson for the Falcons, who's going a full four rounds earlier. And the last guy before him is Rashad Penny, who's going a full six rounds earlier than Marlon Mack currently is. There are 11 rookies currently being taken ahead of Marlon Mack, including guys like Tyler Algier, Jerome Ford, and Kyron fucking Williams is being taken ahead of Marlon Mack right now. And there are 14 running backs currently being taken ahead of Marlon Mack in Dynasty Startups who are not even starters on their NFL teams. That's nearly half of the backup running backs in the league are being taken ahead of Marlon Mack in Dynasty Startups. One of them is Chris Carson, who turns 28 in September and had neck surgery less than a year ago. Another one of them is Chuba Hubbard, who plays behind Christian McCaffrey, and he sucked last year. Chuba Hubbard was terrible last year. And another one is James Robinson, who was, has been similarly successful to Marlon Mack in the NFL. You know, two seasons of success on a bad team. The team that James Robinson is currently on is similarly awful to the team that Marlon Mack is on. They've suffered the same injury that they're recovering from, except for Marlon Mack suffered his Achilles injury in September of 2020, and James Robinson suffered his Achilles injury on December 26th of 2021. Marlon Mack is a year and a half ahead of James Robinson in his recovery, and even if we assume that they're like the same level of health at this point, which I have no idea why we would be assuming that, Marlon Mack is almost undoubtedly healthier than James Robinson is at this point. But even if we're assuming that they're at the same point in their recovery, James Robinson has a first round running back in Travis Etienne ahead of him on a bad team. Marlon Mack has maybe Rex Burkhead ahead of him on a bad team. And there's no reason to think that Rex Burkhead will be the starter over Marlon Mack, given that Marlon Mack has been a better player of his career than Rex Burkhead has ever been. As far as I can tell, there are three possibilities here. Number one, Marlon Mack is healthy. If he's healthy, he's the best running back on this team. He's the starter. He has very little touch competition on, again, a bad team, but we've seen good players on bad teams with volume be useful in fantasy before. The second possibility is that he's not healthy, in which case if you, you know, took him in the 15th round of a dynasty startup and he ends up being toast, you know, he never really recovered from the Achilles injury, then you lost out on a 15th round draft pick and the opportunity to like pick Michael Hardman instead. Like who gives a fuck? The third possibility is, you know, whether he's healthy or not, they pick somebody in the draft and, you know, they go with Isaiah Spiller, you know, they go with a Brian Robinson, they go with, you know, whoever, whoever they could take who ends up being the starter in Houston ahead of Marlon Mack 
then you're in the same situation you would be as if Marlon Mack just wasn't healthy. You lost out on the opportunity to pick Miko Hardman or some other shitty player in the 15th round. And in this event, maybe he's healthy, maybe they take a guy, and maybe he keeps the role, maybe he just wins the job in training camp, maybe he has a couple usable weeks early on in the season before, like, conceding the starting running back role to whichever rookie it is, you know, maybe it's Rashad White who ends up kind of ascending past Marlon Mack, but... Even if they draft somebody, you could get usable weeks out of Marlon Mack, which is probably far more than you can say for a guy like Terrace Marshall, who's going around the same ADP range. And it's not like Marlon Mack is unique in his potential to get, you know, his value eviscerated by the NFL draft. Devin Singletary, the same thing could happen to him. Cordero Patterson, the same thing could happen to him. There's a lot more players than just Marlon Mack. Most of the backups going ahead of him, you know, fucking Ramondre Stevenson or, you know, who else are these guys? Let me scroll back up here. Chris Carson could get eviscerated by the NFL draft. Chuba Hubbard could get eviscerated by the NFL draft. James Robinson might not be healthy by the time the season starts. Who knows if they take a guy to, you know, kind of replace him going forward. He was, you know, what, a seventh round pick undrafted or whatever. They have no reason to keep him around if he's not healthy. Marlon Mack is not unique in his potential to lose out on value because of the NFL draft, but he doesn't have any value to begin with. He's a 15th round pick. He's the RB56, and there are zero players in in his range that have, like, starting running back week one with proven track record of success in their range of outcomes. He has the stupidest ADP in Dynasty right now. He should be going at least ahead of James Robinson, probably ahead of multiple starting running backs in the league, at least ahead of, you know, half of the backups going ahead of him. I understand the injury concerns, and there, of course, is a chance that he's not healthy or that he just doesn't have the juice anymore, even if he's fully recovered. Maybe the Achilles sapped him of his explosiveness. That possibility possibility exists, but you have to invest literally nothing to get him on your team. Throw out a third round pick and you can probably get Marlon Mack in trade. If you're in a dynasty startup and you leave without him and somebody else gets him in the 14th, 15th, 16th rounds, you fucked up. You got to have Marlon Mack, high upside, zero risk. Give yourself a free shot at an RB2 in fantasy by simply taking the cheapest starting running back in dynasty in the 15th round. (laughs) 